everyone, Brian here with DIY Outdoor Life, and we're back, baby. <laughs> now, speaking of back, uh, if you notice that I'm walking or standing a little funny, I have like the worst strip of sunburn down the center of my back that I've ever had in my life. So uh, that's not why I've been away for the last month, but I am looking for tips here. Do you big guys just use like spray can sunblock or do you put it on a you know a rag or something but yikes now today's video i wanted to touch base because so many people been reaching out you know i took one month off and i'm getting wellness checks at my house uh, but i want to show you why i haven't seen you guys since memorial day i have had this monumental project here behind me that sprung up out of nowhere it does relate to the future of the channel so uh let me show you guys what i've been working on now this pond or lake behind me, you might have seen a little bit in my video with Cosmo, but this is out in the middle of the woods on my family's tree farm. This was put in in the mid 1960s and it has been a place to ride boats and swim or fish since I was a kid. Just after Memorial Day, when I saw you guys on my last video, I came back here and found a mud puddle in the woods. Now, naturally, this was pretty devastating, but I had to figure out what went wrong and what we could do to fix it. It turned out to be a pretty large project. Now, over here, you can see the new outlet for the pond, but the one that was put in in the 1960s was a small metal pipe that went out deeper into the center of the pond. There was a T-pipe in it that came up to keep the pond leveled off. What I didn't realize until recently was that the bottom of that T was a plug. That plug was made out of a type of wood, butternut, that doesn't rot underwater. And that was there to drain the pond if you ever had to do some service on it or uh, you know, drain it down to repair something. That wood actually held up underwater for over 60 years, but the metal pipe did not. It crumbled and released all of the water to the lower side of the farm out of this pond. So the first thing that we had to do was get a machine in here, an excavator big enough to be able to dig this pipe out and replace it with a modern plastic pipe. This was not an easy feat. You see, for the last 60 years, this has all been growing in, trees growing up. There was no road or an area that you could drive something like an excavator in to get to this pond. So we had to come up, remove trees, put in drainage, lay down a lot of stone, just to be able to get the machinery in to be able to fix this pond. The vast majority of this project was probably just uh, preparing it to get the equipment in to do the digging. While some parts of this road now look like a driveway and you could bring a two wheel drive vehicle in, there's other parts of the road where just big, heavy, coarse rocks are used for a foundation, just so your machinery isn't sinking and spinning into the mud. Um, but yeah, we had to put a couple hundred yards in just to be able to get this machine around and uh, to do the work needed to restore this pond. Every section where there was a springway, a stream, or a wet spot where we needed to drive the equipment, we had to traverse with these culvert pipes and put in these large head walls and tail walls. Even though the water is flowing really low now, when the snow is giving out, uh, melting out, this is a raging river. So these giant walls help hold this pipe in when they're flowing at full capacity. I think you're getting the gist of why I was gone for the whole month of June. We did all of this in just a few weeks. Most of this was just manual labor, um, small tractors, and everything was preparing for the larger excavator. Now we're still using this springway as a refrigerator, place to store a cold drink, but uh, oh, I wouldn't drink those. But uh, let me show you what the final product is now and why this will tie into the channel.
So with the trees removed, the drainage dug, and rock material brought in for a foundation of the road, we were able to get a big enough machine in to pull that old pipe out, replace it with a plastic pipe that's shot to the level that the lake is going to be at. It should be, uh, should be filled up in another couple weeks. It's really come up a lot. But now the water will go through the dike and travel down to another spillway where it crosses over and goes to the lower section of the brook on the farm. We replaced this whole section of the dike and resurfaced it. And now we're at the stage where we could put down some ground cover, some different tree foils and clovers and different things that'll grow back. But the best part of this whole project, even though it costs a lot of money and was a ton of work, is now we have access with the bushwhacker. <laughs> It's probably been 20 or even 30 years since you were able to drive vehicles in here. I could actually get Lucia's Prius 90% of the way in here now. But as far as the Tacoma or the Jeep pulling the Bushwhacker, my teardrop camper, we're now going to be able to utilize this beautiful pond for some lakefront property. So I think you'll see more of it on the channel. I wanted to thank you guys who reached out and sent me emails when I took a little bit of an unexpected break. This has been 12 to 14 hour work days around the clock, but I've been staying in the bushwhacker. So I do have a bunch of film to be able to put together. There's a bunch of stuff coming out on the channel. I have a ton of product reviews. I'm going over to see my friend Steve's school bus conversion. That's gonna be a, a cool little series we'll be able to do on that. And don't forget, if you guys don't know, the East Coast Bushwhacker Rally, which you're invited to whether you own a Bushwhacker or not, is in Hot Springs, North Carolina, near Asheville. And that's coming up at the end of July. So I'll post some information about that in case you guys wanna hang out. I'm gonna be there for quite a while. I'm gonna stay probably the week there. And uh, we'll shoot some videos and compare notes and see how people are enjoying the great outdoors. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned to, uh, we're probably gonna be putting out a lot of videos now that I'm done with this project and uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Take care guys and I'll see you next time.